Welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I get my bike from this to this after a mud race. People always ask me how I get my bike so clean and make a video about it, so here goes. This is my YZ250FX and I'm cleaning up the bike after a really muddy race in Meridian, Mississippi. I like to start with an initial spray down to knock the bulk of the mud off, but before I do that, I'm going to remove my air filter, install the wash plug, as well as the exhaust plug. For this initial spray down, I'm not using any soap or cleaner. Just this Greenworks 1800 PSI electric pressure washer with the 25 degree nozzle. The purpose of this is just to get the bulk of the mud off the bike so I can give it a more thorough cleaning in the next step. I know there are some people who think pressure washers will damage bearings and seals, but I've been cleaning and maintaining bikes for many years and I've never damaged a seal or a bearing with the pressure washer. A pressure washer is a tool like any other that can certainly cause damage if used incorrectly. Being intentional about the nozzle, where to aim the nozzle, how close it's held as well as understanding the power of the pressure washer is important. For example, I wouldn't use a high powered, high flow gas pressure washer to clean a bike, but if used properly, it can be done without an issue. And I wouldn't use a nozzle narrower than 25 degrees. The 25 degree nozzle works well and anything narrower has a risk of damaging graphics or other parts. I'll include an Amazon link to the pressure washer I'm using down in the video description. Living in the Southeast, I do a lot of riding in wet, muddy conditions and mud is by far the number one enemy of bearings and seals. I clean my bike every time I ride without exception and I routinely service all the bearings and replace them when necessary. After I'm done with the initial spray down, I move the bike to a stand on my driveway. But before I do that, I'm gonna remove the skid plate because that thing traps a lot of mud and debris. I'm gonna go ahead and knock the bulk of the mud off my boots at this point. I made this boot stand out of some one inch PVC as well as some elbows and tees. It comes in really handy and I can wash the boots without filling them up with water. The soap that I use for the next step is X-Star Performance Motorcycle Wash. It's safe for aluminum and works really well for getting mud and stains off the bike. I always get this stuff at Max Motorsports, but if you're not nearby, it's available at several online retailers, including Rocky Mountain ATV MC. You don't have to dilute it, but I find it works really well with two cups of cleaner mixed with water in a two gallon pump sprayer. Using it this way makes it a very economical option as I can wash my bike four or five times with that mixture in the sprayer. Next, I spray the entire bike with cleaner, making sure to spray in all the nooks and crannies. Having a bike on a stand helps get soap on the wheels and all the rotating parts. I'm going to let that soak for 5 to 10 minutes, and while I wait, I'm going to spray my boots and chest protector with the same cleaner. I'm removing the plastic louvers covering the radiators because they trap debris and pine needles. Removing them makes it easier to clean those areas. After the cleaner is soaked for 5 to 10 minutes, I'll give the bike another wash with the pressure washer. Boots and chest protector have been soaking for a few minutes, so I'll give them a final wash and put the boots on the dryer. There's still mud that I can't completely clean under the seat and number plates, so I'm going to remove those next. Depending on conditions, I may also remove the radiator shrouds, but I didn't think that was necessary this time.
I'll follow that up with more soap and a rinse with the pressure washer. The electrical connections on these bikes are water resistant, but it's a good idea to keep dielectric grease on those and inspect them regularly. After washing, I'll blow out any excess water with my leaf blower. Chain lube is another topic that dirt bikers love to argue about. Keep in mind this entire video is me showing you how I do things, but I'm not telling you how to do it or saying my way is the only way. I've gone through my share of O-ring chains over the years, and when I replace them, it's always because the rollers start to fail. The O-rings seal the pins, but not the rollers. So I use the chain lube thinking it may help those rollers last longer. I don't know if I'm right about that or not, but that's my theory. Either way, you need to spray the chain with something to prevent it from rusting, and even a can of WD-40 isn't free. So there's very little difference in cost between using chain lube or WD-40. The cost difference to me is insignificant. And I'm going to reinstall the air filter, remove the exhaust plug, reinstall the number plate, seat, and radiator louvers. This race didn't have any muddy grass track, but when there's grass and hay mixed in with the mud, it's much worse than this. In that situation, I usually have to remove all the plastics except the front and rear fender. I've also had to remove the brake pads to get mud and grass out of the caliper brackets before. After I've finished, I like to start the bike up and bring it fully up to operating temperature. While the bike's warming up, I'm checking the GYTR app to see how many hours are on the oil, and filter, etc. I hope this video helped you out. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. That really helps me out. Thanks for watching.